Hi guys, it's Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zickery of Space Command. And my gosh, it's, it's been a busy, busy, busy uh, week or so. Um, and you know that I was on the picket line on Star Trek Day, which was an amazing time. There were so many wonderful people that I got to talk to. Jerry Ryan and Armin Shimmerman and uh, Ira Bear and uh, Robert Hewitt Wolf and Brandon Braga and, and all the new producers and um, uh, writers of, of, of the new versions of Star Trek and I got to talk to Ethan Peck and tell him about the time I met his uh, grandfather and I actually named Bob Carter's wife in Space Command, Veronique, after Gregory Peck's wife who I met that evening and uh, was so impressed by. And uh, it just, it was an amazing, amazing day at Paramount Studios. And uh, I mean, my gosh, uh, you know, Denise Crosby was there. We got to talk and catch up. So many people I'd love to put in Space Command and the other shows we're doing. Uh, and we'll see what the, what the future brings. Uh, then also I went to the Nebula Awards weekend, the two big awards in science fiction novels and novellas and short stories, the printed science fiction uh, the big awards are the uh, Nebulas and the Hugos. I've been nominated for both in the past, and they're very cool. And, uh, um, and uh, I assumed that when I went to this Nebula Awards weekend, I would be running into all the people I knew, you know, the editors, the agents, the, the authors. And instead, what I found was there was an entirely new generation that had cropped up in, uh, in the last few years, and I knew almost no one. And that was very good because I got to meet a whole bunch of wonderful people. There were a few of the uh, the old guard, as I should say, that were there. And it was great to see my friends again. Uh, Joe Haldeman and his wife, Gay. Uh, Joe and Gay were there uh, at Clarion when I was there in 1975, where I sold my first short story. Joe was one of my teachers, an amazing guy. He wrote The Forever War and many other great, great works of fiction. And the great Robert Silverberg was there. Again, one of the giants of science fiction uh, from the 50s and 60s and onward. And, uh, you know, and, and, and just a handful of other people. But mostly what I saw was when I started going to science fiction conventions when I was a kid, it was a boys club. I mean, basically all the major science fiction writers, with very few exceptions, were men. You know, Arthur C. Clarke, Isaac Asimov, Ray Bradbury, Harlan Ellison, you know, Robert Heinlein, Robert Sheckley, on and on. And there were a few women. Uh, the previous generation had had, of course, the great Lee Brackett, and there was Andre Norton, uh, who was a, a woman writing under a pseudonym, and uh, C.L. Moore, and Zena Henderson, but only, I mean, they were less than, you know, 5% of the total uh, working science fiction writers. Then in the 70s, we got Joanna Russ and Ursula K. Le Guin, and then beyond that, into the 80s, we got Octavia Butler, the great Octavia Butler, and, uh, but now... Now, instead of being a boys club, it's the reverse. Predominantly women and, uh, predom and a large contingent of, of gay writers, you know, gay men, lesbian women, uh, and uh, transgender and many, many races, uh, um, you know, it, which is, for, by my lights, now you, now you guys, you old, old guys may be going, rrr, rrr, but I like it. I like, I like variation. I like diversity. I like difference. Um, you know, I can, I can create the old, old style science fiction with spaceships and ray guns and all that stuff. And I love that. Uh, but there's plenty of room for that. But if someone wants to write something positing a future or looking back at the past with a different viewpoint, fine. And if you like their work, read it. And if you don't like their work, read something else. <laughs> and the same, of course, goes for movies and TV shows. So, um, but I really enjoyed it. And I got to meet a lot of wonderful people. And I, had, I knew none of the writers uh, nominated for any of the categories except for movies, everywhere, everywhere, all, everything, everywhere, all at once, won for best, best dramatic presentation. But other than that, not only did I not know those writers, I didn't know any of their work, had never heard of any of them, but now, of course, I've got some other writers I can check out and look, look into. But, uh, but the first time I ever saw the Nebula was next to a Hugo Award on the mantle of the great Theodore Sturgeon, one of my friend, dear friends and mentors, back in 1975 and I just so coveted those those awards they're so they're so cool um, so th so there was there was the, there was that then I went to uh, content LA where I learned about the coming face of television it's put on by studio and network execs and I can't pitch to them but I can certainly hear what they're thinking about down the road and uh, 
And it was very interesting. What's come, the coming thing, you know, streaming services are kind of starting to uh, lose momentum. And the new thing, there are two new things. One is AVOD, which is advertising based video on demand. And the other is something called Fast, which is basically TV channels like Pluto, where it's the same as uh, broadcast TV with ads and so forth. And it's it scheduled programming, except it's online. And uh, but the problem is that, of course, there's only so many ad revenue dollars. And, and if you have infinite channels, you know, that dilutes the ad dollars. So there's, you know, we'll see where all this heads. But it's, it's certainly, certainly interesting. And one of the things they talked about that I thought was fascinating was product placement that changes depending on each viewer. So, for instance, one person might see a Coca-Cola sign in the background of a show or, or you know, as someone has a, you know, is driving a Ford. But another person might see, you know... Pabst Blue Ribbon or whatever is available now in beer and, uh, <clears throat> you know, and, and, and a Toyota. So, it, so every single person, the algorithm would say what their tastes are and the product placement in the show would be based on those specific tastes. Pretty amazing. So, um, you know, then, then after that, I got to go to my high school reunion and then my elementary school reunion. Amazing times. And, uh, and then I, ran, I went to a, an event with Dean Devlin today, and he and I have been talking about Space Command and other things. And so uh, we're going to get together a uh, week after next. So really an amazing time. I'll tell you more about it in part two of this. But for now, stay safe, stay happy. Talk soon. Bye, guys.